studies, and Saudi Arabian students were leaving comments, getting clarification about the poems because they were using the readings of UMW students who openly shared to learn English. That's something you can't predict. And that's the other thing about open educational resources and the nature of the web right now. Serendipity and exploration fuel the educational experience. We know that. And by putting it out there, it's an act, I think, of faith. And it's a good one, you know, because good things can happen as a result. Now, this is another awesome project um, that we've done. And I, I'm not trying to do this as the I love me wall for the OW. I mean, this is just some examples that have worked. Um, Professor Claudia Everson, who's a poet, and who actually um, was recently the, honored as the poet of the National Poet of Virginia and also a uh, Pulitzer Prize winner. She's really a celebrated poet, a wonderful person to work with. Um, she had this idea that she was going to have every student, we worked in groups of like three or four, like 15 or 20 in a class, create their own literary journal in 15 weeks. So you have the first five weeks to get the theory of publishing a journal and the idea of what it means for a journal to have a mission and stuff. And the last 10, using social networks like Facebook, Twitter, etc., to kind of create a critical mass around their journal that people submit to and that they create actual a journal. So at this point, we have 20 journals that have been created by students. Um, and it's been going on for four years. And this is something that I like about it is it's very both theoretical and practical at the same time. Students have to realize what it means to manage people, to reject people's work, right? And also, without us telling them anything, because we only said, you know, think about how you do it. A lot of them use WordPress, but not all of them. But what was really cool is they managed their workflow in Google Apps, right? So they, they created a Google address, like spindlejournal at gmail.com. Everything was submitted there. They pulled it into Google Docs. They did a spreadsheet of who's, ex like it was really cool because they were doing a workflow like they would in the work world. They were working with four or five people and they were getting it done because the thing is, is at the end of the semester, if you didn't have a journal, you failed. You had to build a journal. And I love this idea of using the web as a space where people make things, as a space where people are charged to work together and create things. And for me, this is one of the biggest kind of successes I've had as an instructional technologist, is working with a faculty to say, here's how they can make something over the course of your semester. And it's proven to be one of the most popular classes at the university. So it seems to me that students also like it. One of the things that students really loved about it and this I found out the hard way, is they love to have it on their resume, a link that points to something real. You know, because a lot of their resumes are going digital too. So one time, you and many blogs, I have to admit, sadly enough, was down. And so a student emailed me like within five minutes, was like, look, why is the site down? I have links out on my resume. And I was like, oh, wait, a minute. God, I'm now supporting students' work to get jobs. And we found a lot of students report back to us about this was a really crucial class for them able to talk and frame their work for a job interview. That, that's cool. You know, that's part of what we do. You know? And then it, it's much more. We have clubs and organizations. UMW Blogs, here's what we did. We, and this is the Big Lebowski, a little shout out to that great film. Um, but here's what we did. We gave no limitations to what students could do on this space, or faculty or staff. Anyone could use it. All you needed was an email. No kind of, you know, you have to do this, you have to comply with this. We said, you show us how to use the space. And they did. Students used it for club sites. We had uh, departmental sites talk to it, because we, we had, how many of you know Adobe Contribute? No, good, you're a little summer. <laughs> Those are the depressed two. The rest oh. of you are happy. Adobe <laughs> Contribute is kind of a legacy web development program kind of interface for, um, uh, editing the web that's been around for too long. And so we just went, our entire site at UMW is WordPress now, everything. And that's an interesting um, thing. But we had people who were creating the department sites, actually 10 departments, moved their department sites to UMW blogs because it was better, because they communicated with their students. And we didn't obviously push them, they just found it a better resource. This is amazing to me. And this for me has been one of the coolest things of the last year. We have students who go abroad. They study abroad and they have experiences. And you know, we had no way of capturing that. You know, no, no should we. It's kind of like theirs. They pay for it, they do it, they get credit. 
But students started blogging their trips, whether it's you know, Australia, Korea, China, Argentina, Colombia, France, England, you name it. They were all over the map. So I started realizing that there were all these blogs popping up. And it was usually the student writing about what they did, putting up an image, and their parents being like, oh, it's great to hear from you. I realized that they're using these sites to communicate with their parents. It was pretty cool. But the stuff they were doing was authentic and fun. So I said to them, I sent them out an email, those who I caught, and I said, look, why don't you aggregate your space to one blog so that everything all of you do shows up there? And they were into it. They all, they all showed up. We have 30 blogs now of people who are internationally exploring the world, sharing it with us. And what's more is they found over 700 posts about their experiences all over the world. And this is something the International Services or the International Study Abroad Program was like, wow, this is gold. Where did you do this? I said, we did it. The students did. Because we let them. Right? No one said, do it. If I were to come in this room with 25 faculty and be like, do this. You would leave, <laughs> right? You would, and you should. You don't need me telling you what to do. But when you open up the possibility and you frame it in such a way that you can experiment and you see what's possible and you bring it together, that's a different experience. And that's what I've learned from UMW Blogs in terms of adopting open. Never sit around and try and tell someone what to do. Rather frame what's possible and give them a space to explore. They'll do it, and they'll do it well. Now, we also have this, which is crazy. I don't know how many of you geek out on Google calendars, but this is a trippy experience. I did. And it really speaks to the idea of open in my mind, even though it's a silly little experiment. Google changed this, which is sad. But Google Calendar used to have the option where you could search all public calendars. So I searched. I put in the search term UMW. I found 47 open public calendars, which when I aggregated them all together, it was really easy to do. It was the most comprehensive calendar of events oh, UMW had ever. And it required nothing on my part. Mm -hmm. So now we've integrated that into our website. That's actually something that every department has a Google Calendar, and we just aggregate. But that's something like, talk about just a mistake of history. I searched UMW on open Google Calendars, and bam, we had the most comprehensive calendar search. Amazing. And I'm sure there has some relevance to your particular colleges too. I'm sure it does. Um, presentation sites. Um, this is a cool story. And then enough of the story, I'm sure. But the bullet is our student newspaper. And they were on, we have an ongoing kind of rivalry between the student newspaper and the local newspaper. Local newspaper hosted our student newspaper for a while, but then I was like, this is the most atrocious looking site I've ever seen. We gotta get off. So then I got in a fight with the newspaper and um, the students came off and they came on the UMW blogs, and this is now on UMW blogs. What happens is, a week after they went on to UMW blogs and they changed their whole site design, the local newspaper changed their whole site design. <laughs> so we had what the students were doing on this platform actually informed how the local newspaper saw their site. And when the students realized that, I mean, they started to realize that what they're doing is actually cutting edge and informing what the actual professional is doing. And that's what you always want to have your students in that situation. Now, this goes back to one of my, this is Virginia Woolf. Now, before I go on, this is yet another section I want to talk about. Um, and this section will bring in, actually, some interesting parts about some of the things I've said. Before I go on, any questions about any of those examples? Yeah. Yeah. Did you say that it's no longer possible to search those calendars? Yeah, Google in about 2008 or 9 shut down the public search of calendars. I don't know if it was a privacy issue because people didn't know they were public. So it's a lot harder to find those now. Um, there are still ways, and if you want a couple of hacks of how to go about it, I can share them with you guys. There are ways to do it, but there's the question of privacy. And so they did it, but I found it one of the best things about Google Calendar. It was really amazing. So talk to me about that. Anyone else? Okay. So this is Virginia Woolf, amazing writer, early 20th century. And she had this book, A Room of One's Own, right? And for me, this idea of A Room of One's Own was basically like how she was framing the experience being a woman in the early part of the century, and particularly being a great writer and a woman. And how you needed your own space. You needed to be able to support yourself. And you'd be able to frame yourself independently of men to define who you were as a writer, as a thinker. And she did. And she did it remarkably. 
And this idea of a room of one's own was interesting to me, and I want to apologize to you.